In my most recent video, I covered the ancient Celtic Britons, how they made their way to Britain, what ultimately resulted in their downfall, and their modern day legacy. In today's video, I'm going to be covering another fascinating part of their history, being Queen Boudica and their uprising against the Roman Empire. Not much is known about the soon-to-be legendary Boudica, but it is known that she was the consort of Prasutagus, King of the Iceni, a tribe which inhabited what is now the English county of Norfolk, as well as parts of the counties of Cambridgeshire, Suffolk, and Lincolnshire in eastern England. Interestingly, this tribe had already revolted against the Romans once before in the year 47, when the Roman governor, Publius Ostorias Scapula, planned to disarm all the peoples of Britain under Roman authority. They were quickly defeated, however, and were allowed to retain their independence once the uprising was suppressed. But anyways, let's get back to Bodica and the uprising at hand. King Pratigus, since he had no male children, had made his two daughters, as well as the Roman Emperor, Nero, his successors. However, upon his death, the Romans ignored this will, and the kingdom which had been independent prior to this was absorbed into the province of Britannia. Catus Decianus, procurator of Britain, was then sent to secure the kingdom for the empire. The Romans' next actions were described by Tacticus, who detailed the pillaging of the countryside, the ransacking of the king's household, and the brutal treatment of the deceased king's daughters. According to Tacticus, Bodica was flogged and her daughters were raped. Soon after that, the Roman historian Cassius Estio states that Bodica made a speech to the Iceni, as well as their allies, the Trinovans, about how much better their life was before the Roman occupation, stressing that wealth cannot be enjoyed under slavery, and placing the blame upon herself for not expelling the Romans as they had done when Julius Caesar tried to claim their land. The willingness of the Britons to sacrifice a higher quality of life under the Romans in exchange for their freedom and personal liberties was an important reason Dio cited for the uprising. The first target of the uprising was the modern day city of Colchester, which was a Roman colonia for retired soldiers at the time. And also just saying I will be using the modern day names for all these cities and towns because I think it's just more transparent and easier to understand. A Roman temple to Claudius had been elected in the town at a great expense to its residents. This, along with the brutal and unfair treatment of the Britons by the Romans, had caused a lot of tension and resentment towards the Roman authorities in the town. The Iceni and their allies the Trinovans at this time comprised an army of a staggering 120,000, and Dio claimed that Bodica called upon the British goddess of victory, Andrasta, to aid their massive army. Once the revolt in the town of Colchester had begun, the only Roman troops available to provide assistance, aside from the few veterans that lived in the town, were 200 auxiliaries located in London, who were not equipped to fight Bodica's army. Colchester was unsurprisingly quickly captured by the rebels, with those who survived the initial attack taking refuge in the aforementioned Temple of Claudius for two days before being overwhelmed and killed. Quintus Petilius Serialis, then commanding the Legio XI Hispania, which consisted of roughly 5,000 men, then attempted to relieve Colchester before suffering a devastating defeat. The infantry with him were entirely wiped out, with only the commander and some of his cavalry escaping the battle. After this, Catus Decianus, whose behaviour had provoked this uprising, fled back to modern-day France and mainland Europe. Another Roman commander, Suetonius, who was leading a campaign against the island of Mona, now called Anglesey off the coast of North Wales at the time, Upon hearing the news of the Iceni uprising, left a garrison at Anglesey before heading to England to deal with Bodica. He moved quickly with a large force through hostile territory before arriving at London, which he managed to reach before the arrival of Bodica's army. However, realising they were massively outnumbered and had no chance of holding the incredibly important city, he abandoned it and left it to Bodica's army who burned it to the ground after torturing and killing all the Roman citizens who remained in the city. Dio and Tacticus both reported that by this point, around 80,000 Romans had been killed during the uprising. According to Tacticus, the Britons had no interest in taking the Roman population as prisoners, only in slaughter, by gibbet, fire, or cross. Dio adds that the noblest women were impaled on spikes and had their breasts cut off and sewn to their mouths, to the accompaniment of sacrifices, banquets, and wanton behaviour in sacred places, particularly the groves of Andrasta. The aforementioned god, Bodica, had called upon to help them win. After Sotonius and his men retreated from London, they regrouped and amassed an army of almost 10,000 men to crush the uprising. The 10,000 men, led by Sotonius, then took a stand in a, defile with, in a defile with woods behind it. 
The Romans took advantage of the terrain and began launching javelins at the Britons as they arrived, before advancing in a wedge-shaped formation and deploying cavalry. Before the battle began, Suetonius allegedly gave an inspiring speech to his men in the face of an overwhelming force. He stated something along the lines that they were Roman soldiers and that even if they were all destined to die, they would do so fighting to the death. It appears this speech worked as the Romans achieved an incredible and crushing victory against Bodica's forces, who, according to Dio, numbered 230,000. Although, I believe those numbers should be taken with a grain of salt, as rulers love to talk up their own achievements by making the enemy army seem a lot larger than it actually was. According to Tacticus, neither the women nor the animals were spared. Supposedly, a reason for the huge number of deaths among the Britons is that when the battle appeared to be lost and they began to flee, they became stuck and trapped by their own chariots, and as a result, many were speared or stabbed through the back trying to escape. As for what became of Bodica, Tacticus reported that she poisoned herself after the battle. Dio, however, states that she fell sick and died before being given a lavish burial. It has been argued that these accounts are not mutually exclusive, and both may be true, however. With this battle was essentially the end of the uprising against the Romans, as after the devastating losses of the battle, there wasn't much of an army left and those that were left just wanted to go back home to their families. It would ultimately be another 350 years before the British would once again be free of Roman rule. Well, I think that's where I'm going to end the video. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for helping me reach a thousand subscribers. It is a crazy milestone for me. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. But with all that being said, as always, I hope you guys have a great day, night, wherever you are, and I hope to see you in the next one.